Okay. Good morning, everybody. And thank you uh, for the opportunity to, to present our work over here. Um, in fact, uh, I will uh, continue a little bit with uh, the issue paper that is also available on this topic. And of course, yeah, uh, uh, I already talked to some people, and you, they are regularly in the news, drones, and everybody has an opinion on them, on what they could do. And what I would like to do here is show a little bit, on the one hand, go in detail really on some examples on what drones could, you, could do for green growth in agriculture, specific, but also zoom out again to uh, what innovative data collection tools could do, but also what, what we uh, need to do in order to make them uh, feasible to use for, for green growth. Um, okay, so what I would like to start with is to introduce you uh, Jacob. Jacob is a farmer in the south of the Netherlands, and he's growing uh, on a yearly basis 450 hectares of uh, potatoes, and he is really an innovative farmer, I would say. He's really one of those early startups, uh, early starters, and he wants to use technology to improve his growth of potatoes, to improve yield, but also improve the quality of his potatoes. And he is quite a challenging uh, procedure for that, as you can see over here. He's using every bit of technology that is available uh, going the year round. So starting with identifying the, 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 the characteristics of the soil, going to what kind of, uh, 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 yeah, what, what kind of uh, uh, density of potatoes he is going to, uh, to uh, put in the soil, uh, in-season mapping of differences in crop uh, behavior, and at the end, uh, yield mapping, uh, which is really crucial in order to identify and analyze if all the measures that he took over the year really helped him to improve his yield and also to improve his quality of the yield. So this high, uh, cycle, he is in fact going through on a yearly basis, and you can imagine that he is collecting a lot of data. And that's also really challenging for him, but also in, in, in general for this uh, large amounts of data, how to deal with them. Now, what do I first would like to, to do is zoom a little bit into one of those data collection tools. And these are the drones. Uh, uh, drones, there are a lot of, of them already on the market. Uh, uh, different types of drones. You see here uh, helicopter-based drones on, uh, on the right. Uh, fixed wing, you know, more like, like normal planes on, on the right. And um, they are in all kinds of categories. And what is really the added value of these kind of drones if you look at the agricultural perspective? Now, first of all, um, they are an independent data acquisition tool. So when you know the Netherlands a little bit is that, uh, in general, yeah, you could say 60% uh, of the time it's clouded. So when a satellite is par passing, then we don't have data on the state of our crops. So then you can use a drone to acquire those data. Another thing is that you can use this drone at the time that it's really critical for the farmer. And so that could be that at a certain point and there is really uh, some, some drought effects or uh, uh, low fertilization effects, then you can uh, uh, use the drone to acquire data on that. And I will also show you later on that you can also use customized sensors, which really are an added value to, uh, to uh, uh, satellite-based observations. And finally, you have an increased spatial detail and that means really the pixel size with which you acquire images can really go up to the centimeter scale. And this is really also important when you want to, to use this kind of image technology for identification of pests and diseases. Then you need this kind of high detail. Um, if you look at the current applications of drone technology, and then the actual applications are mainly focusing at the moment on uh, the use of drones for, for spraying and also uh, variable, variable rate spraying. Uh, they're used for really the remote sensing, so the crop scouting over the growing season in order to provide the farmer with improved information on when to do what on a spatial explicit scale within the field. And the third application, which is also very interesting, is uh, the application of land administration. And it goes a little bit into a sort of data democracy. And you can use the drone in order to acquire very high, uh, high, um, yeah, high quality information, 
which you can use to identify really uh, land parcels and you can improve cadastral information, which is in especially developing countries a really crucial aspect to improve uh, uh, land productivity. So these are actual applications, but there are a lot of, of other potential applications you could say which are currently in the research domain and which are really on the edge between research and operational services. And here you see a few crop damage assessment, infrastructure inspection. In agriculture, we have a lot of infrastructures. Often people need to go into uh, 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 risky situations, and there you can also use uh, these kind of drone applications. Um, now, there are other examples uh, which, I, yeah, which you can also read more in the, in the paper. Um, what are now those extended capabilities of, of drone-based remote sensing? You see here on the left, you see a satellite-based image of the Worldview, Worldview 2 satellite, which is one of the advanced uh, satellite-based sensors which is regularly used in, uh, in agricultural uh, applications. And you see that you see differences in, within fields, between fields, but you can imagine that there with this two meter resolution, that for some applications that would be good enough, but for other applications you really need some more uh, data. And there on the right, you see the data you would be able to collect with a drone-based sensing system, where you have, first of all the RGB information, so really the detailed uh, few centimeter information, which you also collect with your own uh, uh, photo, uh, photo, photograph. Um, but in addition to that, we also have a digital service model. So we have information on the height of the canopy, which is really important to, to, uh, to follow the growth over the season. And a third information layer, which we call hyperspectral data. But you can imagine that we me measure there very detailed spectral information, which tell, gives you information on the nutrient status of the crops, but also on specific pests and diseases of the crop. And this is a sort of next step in, in what you can achieve with these kind of data collection tools. And to show you one example uh, where we applied this kind of uh, sensing systems in uh, a plant phenotyping uh, uh, environment where plant growers are interested in very specific trend plant traits, uh, in this case for maize, you see a plot or you see an image over here over a maize field where the plant breeding company has laid out 4,000 uh, maize plots. Every plot is consisting of two rows and something like uh, 40 plants. And the breeders are in fact interested in characteristics like height, biomass, and also the, the, the development of these kind of uh, uh, traits over time. So what we were able to do with, uh, with this kind of drone-based uh, 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 acquisition is to provide these breeders with 3D detailed information, which is really uh, relevant at the plot level. And by comparing that with the ground surface, we were able to derive um, an, an height map uh, of, uh, of this uh, plant breeding uh, experimental plots. And normally what plant breeders need to do, they need to go into the field, measure by hand, on a plot-by-plot -plot basis, these kind of uh, characteristics, and now you would be able to do that in, uh, in one go. So this is, of course, quite a sophisticated uh, uh, um, uh, application eh, in plant breeding, but you can imagine that you can also put this on a, on, a, on a larger scale. And if you look then at the accuracy of this kind of, uh, of, uh, of, of uh, uh, quantification, and we compare the UAV-derived uh, uh, um, measurements with the measurements which are derived by the plant breeding uh, company themselves, then you see that the, the accuracy is, is quite well. You see some spread, but you have, of course, the complete uh, field in, in one go. So this is really detailed, really going to what, what is achievable with this kind of technology. But uh, that's quite a big step going from data to inform decisions. And that is, in fact, what farmers need. Farmers are not interested in maybe height maps because, they, yeah, they say, oh, I want to, to know what I need to do in the field for my management activities. So they want to have management information on where to do, do, to do what at, at what time over the growing season. So that means that we need to go from left to right. There are a lot of opportunities to collect data and detect the crop status. Then we need to make a diagnosis of the, the crop status and the crop health. 
And based on certain decision rules, we need to inform the farmer on what he needs to do in the field. And that means variable rate application of certain pesticides or fertilizer, or he would like to have alerting service to do something at a certain point in time. And there we really are hitting an, a challenge in this kind of applications. Because a lot of data are collected, and of course uh, there's already a lot of talk about the big data era that we are currently in. But also in these kind of applications you need to tackle this big data uh, uh, challenge. Because who is going to do that? The farmer is acquiring, acquiring his own data, but of course there are also a lot of companies who are acquiring this kind of data. But they're doing that in all kinds of ways. So there are differences in standards and collection uh, uh, procedures. Uh, there's difference, of course, in, uh, in intellectual property and also in data ownership. So the point is here, who is going to take the lead? On the one hand, that of course will be closed models where companies are using the data that they collect to develop these kind of diagnosis systems and decision rules. But on the other hand, uh, does that give enough space for everybody who wants to develop further on this to, uh, to uh, develop the right, the right uh, uh, solutions? Um, so that is an interest, interesting challenge, the data, uh, uh, the data ownership challenge. Now, if we now move up, fr move up from, uh, from the farm level to really the complete chain from the farmer to the logistics to the final consumer, and then we're entering this field of uh, 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 the ICT, the, the Internet of Things, where, where you have a certain product, but also that includes uh, uh, information associated to the product. So what you see is already connections where farmers are directly interacting with consumers in order to provide them products which they, they have some background on, on uh, the data and, uh, and the, the quality of, of their products. And also there are things like uh, um, uh, what uh, Vincent was already indicating, things like uh, the endurance of uh, logistics, when do you need to uh, uh, maintain your, uh, your ma uh, machines, that is also an issue over here. So what we need is to go towards integrated solutions. And what is interesting there is that at, at the top, you see already that the large-scale companies in, in the agric agricultural field are already preparing portals in order to uh, yeah, uh, give information to the farmers uh, for which they, uh, in which they can optimize their, their management. But you also see uh, new companies ex uh, uh, developing, companies who are developing apps which can directly help farmers to benefit in this uh, 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 um, diagnosis and decision rule uh, uh, um, um, trajectory. And what is critical over there is that certain data standards uh, are developed and that it, it's all connectable and integratable between uh, the different uh, players in this field. Um, so to conclude a little bit, uh, we can say that also, agricultural is becoming a software business. It's becoming, uh, there's competition on platforms. There are different large-scale players who are developing their own platforms. But how does that service the, the, the smaller uh, uh, farmers who maybe sometimes not, are not always uh, uh, organized in this sense? The other thing is that it also gives incentives for new entrants. And really, from the ICT perspective, they are completely different uh, and new uh, companies who enter this field of agriculture uh, and, and have a completely different perspective, which sometimes is much more innovative. And agriculture can still be optimized, so that is w where this data can help. And you see that there, in an agricultural company, there more and more becomes a specialization, a specialization between roles, where on the farm you have the manager, you have an investor, especially on the uh, larger scale farms, but also you have the data analysts in, uh, in the farm. Um, what does it mean for policy research? Now, first of all, of course, we're looking at green growth. So that means that next to agricultural uh, uh, or increase of productivity, also these data are also uh, giving opportunities to monitor more effectively the environmental effects. And what is 
very important over there is to disseminate best practices between the different players in this field. Um, the critical thing over here is, uh, do we want a certain undesirable market, monopolies, to develop, or do we, do we need to put some policy on that? And what is especially also the future of those smaller uh, farming uh, companies? So that really focuses on data ownership, but also on the privacy of uh, data. And finally, we need to develop yeah, a new type of big data analytics, which maybe is not at the moment very well known in, uh, in, in the field of agriculture in order to, to get uh, to the next step from data to final practices. Okay, thank you.